It's a crossover edition of Locked on Auburn and Locked on Aggies. I'm Zach Blackerby, host of Locked on Auburn. He's Andrew Stefaniak, the host of Locked on Aggies. And Andrew, both of these teams start out conference play this weekend, a showdown in what we know is the final year of the SEC West between Auburn and Texas A&M. And I think both teams kind of are feeling pressure for different reasons. I think Hugh Freeze from the Auburn side wants to make a statement because he's kind of been counted out by everyone, including our friends at FanDuel. We'll get to them in a second. And then on your side of the aisle, the Texas A&M side of the aisle, if Jimbo Fisher loses, everyone's going to freak out. You're already hearing mumblings of all these rich people saying, we'll come up with the money for the ridiculous buyout if we have to. So my first question to you as we start this conversation, who has more pressure? The Auburn side of things or the Texas A&M side of things? It's a great question, but I have to lean the Texas A&M side of things just because when you look at Auburn's schedule, I was looking at it, and they're not favored in their next handful of games to where to succeed, you know, what I assume Auburn fans' expectations are for the the year, I don't think they necessarily need to win this game. Texas A&M, you know, we've counted this as one of the games that if you want to have the year – that fans want nine wins, 10 wins is off the table a bit now since the Miami loss happened, but yeah. um, nine wins. If you want to achieve that goal, I, you cannot lose this football game. And like you said, that's when, when, you know, rumblings are going to start to happen. If you, if you start the season uh, two and two, it, it's not going to be pretty. So this is a football game. If you're a Texas a and player or coach, I, I think you got to win this one. Do you think there's any, of that going on in Jimbo's head, right? I mean, he, he sees these reports that sources are coming out and reporting that, yeah, we'll find the money if we need to. Or is it just so much money where you're like, you know what? Like, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay. But uh, these coaches aren't wired that way, right? Like Jimbo wants to win at Texas A&M. Yeah, you know, that's a good question because it's like, you know, these co- if you ask him, he's going to say, oh, no, no, I don't look at any of that. I, I, none of that bothers me. But I mean, I think it's part of humanity. I mean, we all see that stuff. We we yeah. all see that 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 kind of stuff. So, uh, how much does it affect them? I don't know. But I, I you're definitely you definitely know he's seeing it. I, I just don't know how much of an effect it has on you know his day to day a job coaching the Aggies. Yeah. What I think is interesting about Saturday is there's both there's pressure on both of these teams. But whoever wins on Saturday. With the state, the current state of the SEC West, it's the worst I've seen it, or maybe the most even I've seen it in my time covering college football. I'm sure you're going to say the same thing because Alabama looks vulnerable. Ole Miss is Ole Miss until you win the division or the conference, Lane Kiffin. I'm just not going to believe it. And then, you know, Mississippi State looks really bad. LSU depends on what version of them you get. I think they're front runners, and I I just think somebody's going to pop them in the mouth early and they're not going to respond well. And I, I. I think whoever wins on Saturday, that fan base is going to be able to convince themselves that, oh, we can win the SEC West. We're contenders for the SEC West in its final year. You know, you you look at the SEC West, and it's something I've talked a lot about over on my show, but exactly what you said. It's not the West that we are used to seeing. And I talked about how much pain it brings me as an SEC homer to to see the SEC struggling as a whole. But no, the conference is not strong right now i don't think and and i think that creates opportunities for teams not named alabama and georgia to kind of make a run at this and that includes auburn and texas a&m and i mean i know texas a&m is one thing i talk a lot about a lot is the blue chip ratio the talent on this roster mm-hmm. you know we it, it, it has to click at some point and you know if, if it's this year i know that they already dropped the ball game against miami but i mean it, it still could click if it does click the sky's the limit for this football team but it has to click um so yeah i think the sec west i think like you said whoever wins this football game i think either fan base is gonna gonna get really excited based on what we've seen from the conference so far this season yeah these early season games are so interesting especially you know when you start conference play because we still don't know a whole lot about either team. I think we know more about Texas A&M because they played Miami and Auburn played Cal. I think Miami's way better than uh, than what Cal is. Um, but how important do you think those two games were specifically? A&M's loss to Miami, Auburn's narrow win against Cal. I'm curious to see, like, okay, is that who those two teams actually were because that's the best level of competition that they've played? Or are they going to look like totally different teams when they play each other 
on Saturday because I'm sure Auburn held things back against Cal. AM may not have been in a situation to do that against Miami just because of the nature of the opponent. But I think there's a chance on Saturday we see two totally different teams than what we were expecting. You know, that, that's another interesting point. I, I did have the pleasure, or some might say the displeasure, of watching Auburn's game at Cal. Good for the Tigers for leaving that one with a win, but man, that was not a fun way to spend two in the morning. Um, oh, that's right. But, you know, I mean, it was a big, but I mean, all joking aside, that was a big win for Auburn. I mean, you know, it was good for them and Coach Freeze to go on the road, travel all that way and get a win on the road against a Power 5 team. Um, but no, I mean, I watched that game knowing what Q Freeze is as a, and I know he's not calling the plays. And I know I've heard him say he called a couple, but um, Philip Montgomery's your play caller. But, you know, I watched that offense and I did think it was a little bit you know, vanilla. I thought there was a lot more they could show. And that was my initial reaction. Like you said, was I, they're holding something back for SEC play because they think they can win this game without, sure. you know, showing everything for Texas A&M. You know, it was one of those football games. I just think, you know, uh, Miami made their, made their mistakes. Uh, you know, they gifted A&M 14 points right out the shoot with a, uh, with a block punt and a muffed punt um, given goal to go opportunities. And, the Aggies were able to uh, punch it in. But then in the second half, it was kind of a flip of that script, and Texas A&M gave Miami the football and, and turned the ball over and made some mistakes. So um, I think Texas A&M, I mean, I, they're in that football game, I think, if they don't make those mistakes. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you let a kickoff go to the house. And I think that's going to be the key is, is taking care of the football. So I think Texas A&M is, is a great football team that turned the ball over too much and it bit them in the behind against Miami and and Auburn I think like you said I think there's there we we don't know what that team is yet I think they have a lot that's going to potentially surprise us coming up on Saturday. Yeah, I think the way these two games unfolded for these two teams I think it benefits Auburn a little bit because I think it's very clear how an offense should attack Texas A&M and that's by passing the football, throwing the football in that intermediate range, 10 to 15 yards down the field. We saw Auburn kind of go out of their way to do that against Samford last week. I think that's, I think a lot of arrows in this matchup point towards Texas A&M. I think this is one of the few that does point towards Auburn. You know, I agree. Now, my, my only question there would be when it comes to Auburn attacking Texas A&M is what are we going to see from Peyton Ooh. Thorne? And um, I, I know they were doing the two quarterback thing. Are they not? Is that not a thing anymore? What's the deal with that? I think we're going to see them both on okay. Saturday. Yeah, I think we'll see both Peyton Thorne and Robbie Ashford okay. on Saturday. Yep. But um, Peyton Thorne obviously is your downfield guy, throw the football guy. Robbie Ashford is going to come in and run the ball on you. And you know, it, can Peyton Thorne and can these receivers can they get open? Now, I'll tell you. I mean, I was watching. Uh, there were receivers getting open um, for Louisiana Monroe against. Texas a on Saturday. So, you know, I, in no way am I saying that I don't think these Auburn receivers can get open, but um, I think they can and I, and I think they will. But, you know, can it, it, it work in, in – can both things happen? Can Peyton Thorne get it to the receivers? Can the receivers get open? That's going to be interesting because if they can, Auburn's going to be able to attack the Aggies there. Um, and I mean, it's definitely going to happen a few times. The question is, will it happen all game long? And I think that could make or break this football game for the Auburn Tigers if they can throw it all game long. Andrew, there's been a few narratives that have popped up this week about this game. There's one that I don't think has popped up that several Auburn fans have mentioned to me, and I want to get your thoughts on it in just a moment. Right here on this crossover edition of Locked on Auburn and Locked on Aggies. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Jace Medical. They have an awesome product. It's called the Jace Case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. All it takes to get a Jace case is to fill out a simple online form. And in some cases, jump on a quick call with one of our board-certified physicians. And then you can get ongoing care from physicians on any treatment-related questions. It's doctor-created and doctor-recommended. Look, with uh, supply chain issues all, all over the place, you want to make sure that one of the things you don't have to wait on is your medication. And Jace Medical gets that. And they receive, uh, if you order it, some people receive the package the same day they get a sinus infection and their doctor was out of town. And that really impacts your life. So right now you can save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using our code LOCKEDON, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, 
at checkout at jacemedical.com. That is spelled J-A-S-E medical.com. Andrew, one narrative that I was expecting to pop up more, especially from the Auburn side that really hasn't, is last year's game. Last year's game. I mean, AM's roster, I'm sure with the with with the, the world of the transfer portal and, and recruiting and, and all of that, that there were some changes to the roster, but the core, the core of Texas AM's roster last year went to Jordan Hare Stadium and lost to a very bad Auburn team. And Auburn flipped their roster much more than Texas AM did. Why do you think that's not a talking point this week? You know, the, the one thing I look at that football game, you know, in uh, from the Texas AM side, it, you know, as painful as the loss was, it, it, uh, seeing Coach Cadillac Williams, I do think that was pretty cool. Seeing that was cool. Him, seeing yeah. him come out, you know, and so I think everybody can agree on that. But I think the difference from this year to last year and why that narrative hasn't floated around a ton is a little bit of it, it's coaching turnover. One thing I've been super high on is Coach Petrino. I actually heard a, a quote from Coach Freeze talking about Coach Petrino and the yeah. kind of struggles that he brings um, to opposing you know defenses and defensive coordinators. Yeah, you may want to clarify that. Not just struggles that he brings, but to who. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And you know, looking at looking at last year's matchup, I just think Jimbo was calling plays last year and it wasn't working. That offense wasn't flowing. And like I said, your offensive line is pretty much the exact same. You lose Devon Achan, of course. He's playing for the Dolphins now. You lose. He beat my um, Patriots last, uh, Sunday night. Yes, I was very appreciative of that. And Raheem Mostert, who um, I appreciate him as well. But, yep. um, you know, you look at this, and I think last season compared to this year, that the turnover is not really there player-wise. I think it's more coaching staff. Yeah, um, Your offensive line's back. Your quarterback, Connor Wigman, has taken a big step. He's looked really good thus far. Is he, is he the real deal, you think? Is he a top I'm, half I'm, SEC I'm, quarterback? I'm sold. I'm sold on Connor okay. Wigman. I think he is the real deal. Um, But I just think that it, it's not really turnover. I think it's, it's a matter that you play in the game in front of your home fans, and I think the coaching turnover, and, and you got a lot of those former five stars. This is the last point I'll make on it. A lot of those players were, were, were young. I mean, that 2022 class was freshman last year. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of talent, a lot of five stars out there that were young. They've all developed a little bit. The defensive line and getting some pressures, uh, quite, I'm sure we'll get into that. But um, I think the difference from last year to this year is just developing talent, Coach Bobby Petrino, and the big step forward Connor Wigman's taken. Okay. So yesterday you and I were texting back and forth, and I asked for a few names to say, who, who do I need to be talking about? And this was on a show that we put up yesterday. And you, you said the two receivers, Evan Stewart and Anaya Smith. That makes sense. Why did you tell me Walter Nolan and Fidel Diggs? Because the more I looked into them, specifically Diggs, I didn't really see anything special with those guys. And now I think the unit, the defensive unit of AM's front seven is good, impressive, and I think it's going to present trouble for Auburn. But why those two guys specifically? Why Nolan and Diggs? So... It, it almost was kind of a you you need those two to play well if you want to beat Auburn and if you want to have a successful season. Fadil Diggs is your best pass rusher. One of the big annoyances. Of, I'm, so, I mean, I'm sorry to cut you off, Andrew, but yeah. what you, what are you basing that on? He's had 48 pass rush attempts and he's just given he's allowed he's forced four pressures. Like that's not that's not good. Well, that, that so that's what I'm going to get into. Really, is, I'm sorry. Is, Go ahead. I'm no, sorry. You're good. Is the <laughs> lack of Coach Durkin doesn't like to draw up pressures. Our defensive coordinator DJ Durkin does not call up pressures. He doesn't. He like he doesn't like to send. He, he he doesn't enjoy sacks. He doesn't enjoy stopping the other team. He's like, you know what? You all just pass on us all game long. And my my thought here is this: I am hoping that he's looked back at that Miami tape and said, "Wow." Tyler Van Dyke had all day in the pocket and he picked us apart. I have yeah. got to dial up pressure. Is that going to happen? I don't know. It, it, he might be a little stubborn and not do that. But I think anybody that watches that tape back, tape back, you know, says we need to get more pressure on the quarterback. And over these last few years, when you need someone to go get you a sack, it's been Fadil Diggs. So while we haven't seen much of it this season, he hasn't had much success at it this season. It's kind of more of a hope 
than a, than a, something that, that's happened thus far this year. It's something that I think if the Aggies want to win nine games this year, Fadil Diggs needs to get after the quarterback a whole lot, and he has yet to do it this season. And the Walter Nolan just a beast. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just a talented player, one of those uh, highly ranked five star players, one of the highest ranked players in Texas and football history. Um, and and he just needs to really get going big time. He needs to you know stop the run, get after the quarterback. Texas A&M's done a good job stopping the run compared to what many imagined this year. And I, so I guess my argument is: Have these guys been perfect this year? No. But I think if you want to beat the Auburn Tigers and put up, you know, be six and two in SEC play, those two guys need to be a big part of it. Sure, sure, I get that. And look, a, a storyline from the Auburn side of it this week is the offensive line is a little banged up. Cam Stutz, team captain, represented Auburn in Nashville at Media Days, and he's been, from my point of view, a very pleasant surprise. I didn't really see this coming, to be honest. But he he went down against Samford, and you saw that interior push go away and freeze kind of mentioned like he's kind of the dude in that room and uh he, he left the game he was at practice earlier this week so we'll certainly see if he plays that's i think a good sign the fact that he was in practice so early in the week and then is avion miller that one looked a little bit more serious that looked like an ankle sprain to me i'm not a doctor but that is just this is what it looked like so we'll see if he's able to play but i mean you talk about nolan specifically uh, cuz he's more in the interior right he's more of like your three technique yeah and it's like you if if you do not have stutz and you have the opportunity to line him up against the backup guard that's a big mismatch in favor of texas a&m yeah that's a great point i actually didn't know um that auburn was dealing with some with some offensive line injuries um but you know it, it's a great it's a great point i mean he can take advantage of that if you're bringing in a guy that's not one of your guys, um, and I don't know about the depth, is is Auburn are they deep in the offensive line, or is it kind of a a, a starting five heavy room? Uh, I think they've got like six dudes. I feel really good about. Okay, and they're so, on their seventh guy, so that's oh, where it kind of gets a little iffy. Yeah, but yeah. you know that's a good point. I mean, if Walter Nolan's able to pick on a guard who, you know, the Auburn Auburn coaching staff really doesn't want in there, uh, I mean that that could be a, a way to kind of take advantage of it. But, um, you know, I mean, so I, I think we're going to need to see Walter Nolan, you know, try and get some pressure, stop the run. And then Fadil Diggs, I mean, try and take advantage of those tackles. I know the tackles for Auburn have been great this year. I saw a stat um, that you sent for about the uh, Dylan Wade. Is he, he the right tackle? Or is he he's left tackle? Dylan left Wade tackle. Left mm-hmm. tackle. And he hasn't, like, allowed any pressure. So, right. you know, to f- what A&M hasn't been able to do this year is get pressure. Not, And I don't know if that's really – based on personnel or if it's based on coaching staff, I lean toward the latter. Um, but if, if Fadil Diggs isn't able to get pressure or, or any, you know, of the pass rushers aren't able to get pressure, you know, I think Peyton Thorne will be able to, to pick this secondary apart and make this game more of a shootout than a kind of low, you know, low scoring SEC West defensive affair. You want to drop some predictions? You want to do, do it? it? Let's, let's do it. Let's All do right. It. That's coming up in just a moment, right here on this crossover edition of locked on Auburn and Locked On Aggies. Today's show brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel is the best place to wager on all of your sports action. And look, we're about to do a full segment on it, but Auburn is a seven and a half point dog. If you like the Tigers, put the money on Auburn to cover that seven and a half. If you like the Aggies and you like the Aggies by a bunch, you know, throw the money on Texas A&M. But right now they've got a cool deal at FanDuel. New customers can get $200 of bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet, that's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. You can use the bonus bets on spreads or player props, over-unders. They've got more than just that as well. So be sure to check out their app that's very easy to use. Also, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off your betting for the NFL, college football, and more. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NFL. Andrew, seven and a half points. It's a lot of points. It's a lot that's of a points. lot of points in favor of your Aggies. You think that's fair? You think that's accurate? You know, I, I think a lot of that is is home field advantage points. Now, do I, you know, I know we're going to get into predictions. Do I think the Aggies win this game? Yes, I do. Do I think they cover? That is when this conversation gets sure. more interesting. Yeah. Um. So, but you're right. That's a lot of points playing at home in an SEC West, you know, matchup, even though you're at home, it just does feel like a lot of points. So, uh, you know, I'm kind of, 
I think the Aggies win, but did they cover? That's what I'm going to kind of have to sit here and think about. Yeah, the home field advantage angle is interesting because for a while, the the teams in the series played better on the road than they did at home. Auburn did well at College Station. The Aggies did well at Jordan-Hare Stadium. So that, that's kind of been interesting. It's evened out since then, but the first few times when A&M came into the SEC, it's like they were trading road wins. It was very, very interesting there. But So I, I don't know how that's necessarily going to impact Saturday. I do think it's relevant though it's something you've got to think about because we saw how Peyton Thorne you said you watched the game you saw how Peyton Thorne looked early against Cal it wasn't good it wasn't good at all and I don't know if it was all him or if it was other people but something didn't look right with him when he took the field on the road and I'm just guessing I'm just guessing I think you'll agree but I imagine A&M people will not be as uh I think they will be more intense than the Cal fans were in that half built stadium. So I, I just think, uh, I think that's certainly part of it. I'm with you. I, I think seven and a half is a lot. I, I'm picking Texas A&M to win this game. I think the Aggies win on Saturday, but, but I'm with you. Seven and a half is a bunch. It's a bunch. I can't wait to see Connor Wegman and then his, his receivers with Evan Stewart and Anaya Smith. I can't wait for them to go up against Auburn's defensive backs. That is the strength of this team. DJ James, I could watch him play football all day long. Nehemiah Pritchett is expecting to make his return um, coming off of uh, injury. He's kind of been banged up for a few weeks. It seems like he's going to be ready to go. Kay and Lee, one of the better freshman corners in America. I've been really, really impressed with him. I just, I can't wait to see one, how Auburn's defensive game plan works and what they're like, what they're aiming to do with personnel. And then also the other side of it is I'm just really intrigued with, okay, can Connor Wegman throw against a good defense? No no disrespect to Miami, but Auburn's defense is better than Miami's. So what does that look like, right? I, I, I think there's a chance that, um, that both defenses look a little good. I think both defense probably uh, – the over-under right now, Fandle's 51.5. I think right now I'm leaning towards the under. Andrew, what are your thoughts on that? I, I agree with you. I lean in the under. And that was one of the things I was kind of battling back and forth was, is this going to be a shootout? Is this going to be a low game, you know, a low scoring game? And you make, you, you make a good point bringing that up and, and that I could see this being an under. I looked at um, the, and I have two, two points to respond to some stuff you kind of just went over. The first thing is, you know, Peyton Thorne, the Cal game, what I saw in the stadium was a whole lot of orange and blue. I did not sure. see a lot of yellow and yellow and blue. Was that a true road test? Now, yes, I understand that the the road, the, the travel and all that, that's you know tough on the team and good for Auburn going and getting the job done, representing the SEC while winning that football game. Right. But when it comes to the environment, yeah, you know, I'm not a big believer in that. You know, in what we saw there, I think that Peyton Thorne is going to have to prove it in a real SEC environment. And I know he came from the Big Ten; he's played in some big time environments, but he hasn't played in a in a deep South SEC environment. And it'll be interesting to see how he responds to that. You know, first road game in the SEC. That's you know, you will free our first road SEC game for Thorne. So it'll be interesting to see how he responds to that. And then the, it's a great point you make. I think that Texas A&M's receivers versus Auburn's secondary is the biggest matchup on the football field on Saturday. The, you know, I, I talked about that on my show. I, the, Auburn has a really talented secondary. Like you said, I think that in the running back room from what I've seen are, are, are the two best rooms on the team. And, you know, Texas A&M strength is throwing the football is using Connor Wigman to just fill it up, throw it around, throw it to all these different talented guys. That's going to be the key here. If they want to win this football game, mm -hmm. th they need to get the ball to the receivers and, and, and early and often, but I think they want to have balance too. They want to be able to run the football. They haven't run it crazy well so far this year, so they're going to want to run the football a little bit better um, against Auburn and have that balance that Coach Petrino loves to have. But you're right. I, I think I'm hammering the under here. I thought about it. I've kind of gone back and forth, but I, you've convinced me on the under. I'm, I'm in on it. I'm, a, a, I'm in on the under. And, and then are we ready to get into some predictions here? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just kind of to echo – what you were saying, this game feels like a 27-20 to me. Um, so I, I guess I'll go 27-20 Texas A&M. Which would have a lot of people in Vegas angry if they leaned toward A&M minus 7.5. Um, 
but they, they always get it close. That's kind of why I'm basing it off of that. Yeah, no, it's no, you're, it's a great point. Um, it's, but ah, oh, man, I, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go a little bit lower scoring contest than you, and I'm gonna go okay. 24 17 Texas A and M Aggies. All right, so we're not too far off. Yeah, we're not too far off there. So we'll see. Let us know in the comments whether you're watching Locked On Auburn channel or the Locked On Aggies channel, and please click that subscribe button. Andrew, best of luck this weekend, and uh, hopefully we chat again soon. Yep, good luck to the Auburn Tigers this weekend as well.